management space with some of your favorite doctors. And they need more coal power. Uh, meanwhile, California, uh, which gets, uh, I think, about 15% of its uh, energy from nuclear power plants, they're shutting another one down. The Diablo uh, Canyon nuclear plant. I mean, because they've got plenty of energy. You know what I mean? We're not gonna we're not gonna mess around with this 100% clean energy, renewable energy. We've got a climate to save, and uh, that cannot be part of the future. Too dangerous. This is the Glenn Beck program. A lot to talk about. California, the economy, uh, the left. Uh, let's go, Brandon. All coming up. <laughs> and welcome to the program. People are disappearing in China. And the left is afraid of the right... Although, I'd like to present some evidence, Your Honor, that maybe they should fear the left. The debate on Capitol Hill is getting a little uncivil. We go there in 60 seconds. And, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was hearing. Let's go, Brandon. Huge Brandon fans around here. Oh, NASCAR. Mm -hmm. Big yeah. Brandon guys. Talladega yeah. uh, had the big race this week. Can we play the audio of Br- Brandon? Moment. Brandon, you also told me. You can hear the chants from the, the crowd. Let's go, Brandon. You told me you were going to kind of hang mm. back those stages and just watch and learn what learn that helped you there in those closing laps. Oh, my. It was. Uh, wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't uh, say "Let's go, Brandon." No, "Let's go." It sounded more like a word with one syllable, and then Joe Biden. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, that's weird. Because he's, you know, he's, he wasn't racing. He's the president, but he's not racing. And so in I don't basketball. understand. It has to be "Let's go, Brandon." We have printed the "Let's go, Brandon" T-shirts now. <laughs> you can get them at shop uh, blazemedia dot com. <laughs> shop dot blazemedia dot com. Uh, the uh, it's a, it's a nice black T-shirt with big white letters just says "Let's go, Brandon." <laughs> um, and you will know exactly what it really means, which is great. Which is great because a lot of people will say, "Who is that?" And you'll go, "Brandon, the guy uh, the that NASCAR I think guy. won from NASCAR mm-hmm. uh, in Talladega." I will say, if that is an example of her mishearing that it's one thing if she figures it out and on the fly comes up with let's go brandon i am really impressed <laughs> as a broadcaster if she's on the fly and she hears it and she goes oh the cha- let's go brandon i get i guess <laughs> i will be blown i mean away. how did nbc roll that i don't know how did they roll that i mean that is really not good but it's happening all everywhere, over the place, all over the place. I mean, it's it's impossible to defend his presidency so far. I mean, do you know anyone who who really defends his presidency? I hear people who tell me that Trump is worse. I hear people who tell me that. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Could they back that up? No. Yeah. Okay. No. no not at all. Because I would like to but, say, all right, I'd like to hear because it, it would only go to, well, he was dividing the country and he was on Twitter. Okay. Okay, so the only difference here is he's not on Twitter. Right. right. He, <laughs> instead, he releases press releases that everyone retweets anyway. Right. So it doesn't make any difference. Right. But, like, he, you know, people obviously don't like Trump and they thought he and think he's terrible and blah, blah, blah. So you do hear that from the left. Like, when you bring up a point about Joe Biden, they typically will respond with a point about Trump, not a point defending Joe Biden. Right. No one's like outside of Jen Psaki, there is no defense. So, in other words, what you're saying, what you're saying is they have a bad case of what (laughs) aboutism. I guess. (laughs) Yeah. If if they can muster any defense at all, Mm -hmm. it's that. 
Mm -hmm. right? Oh, Mm -hmm. yeah, well, you guys are dumb. You guys don't listen to science. You guys, uh, Donald Trump wanted to get out of Afghanistan, too. How many times? I've heard that one a hundred times. I've heard that a hundred times, too. Oh, yeah, well, Donald Trump had a, he said he was going to get out in May. That's right. That's right. He didn't say he was going to get out with the, all the mental acuity of a chimpanzee. I want to. I want to go to the Hawaiian Islands, but I. I'm not going in Amelia Earhart's plane. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. We can have the same yeah. goal of yeah. I want to go to the Hawaiian Islands. Yeah. It's how you do it. Yes. That really makes a difference. We're, I mean, we're at a point now that Joe Biden has been president the entire time he's been president. He's been president with the vaccines, right? Since we did this, uh, we were talking about this the other day off the air. Since the first case of coronavirus in this country, uh, 1,175 people per day died from COVID during the Trump presidency. Uh, With Joe Biden, it's 1,113. He's almost caught up. Now, remember, Trump got this on his doorstep with no idea what it was and no way to treat it. Right. Joe Biden has a year of knowledge, plus all the vaccines out there, plus monoclonal antibodies and steroids and whatever, ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, all the things that we've thrown at this over the years. And he's at almost the same rate it's per because day. Of, because of Trump voters that won't get vaccinated. Right. That's what it is. And that's what they say. I right? know. Remember, Joe Biden ran for president of the United States. By saying, I'm not going to shut down the country, I'm going to shut down the virus. And since then, despite the fact he has the vaccines that Donald Trump actually pushed through, he's almost to the level now of Donald Trump in deaths per day. And now, he's shut down the country. Do you re- yeah, and he's, he's done all sorts of things to mm-hmm. either shut down the country or come close to it. And remember how every single death was the fault of the president when Donald Trump was president? Remember how they used to come out? It's like it's still the cool. fault of President Trump. <laughs> right, he's not even president <laughs> right. anymore. Now still they say, is. now they say, like uh, hundreds of thousands have died because of these right wing governors. Uh, no, they're don't... saying the governors, but they're also saying. I just heard this over the weekend that uh, Donald Trump he didn't act fast enough. If he would have acted faster uh, and put the lid on this thing, we a lot of lives would have been saved. We're still paying for his. His uh, lackadaisical attitude on this. You were calling him a racist when he closed international travel down. Yeah, and uh, the the book Peril outlines how it was Donald Trump and like one or two of his aides that wanted to close down uh, the uh, travel from China when they did it, including Anthony Fauci was against it. <laughs> was it was against it? What a surprise! Now he eventually came around later on. And so did a lot of other people, and pretty much every scientist at this point now acknowledges that that was the right thing to do. But it was pretty much just him and one or two other people. So, Stu, um, let me change subjects here. Um, A labor union representing more than 90,000 school officials across the U.S. has begged Joe Biden to send the FBI and Secret Service agents to protect them from, quote, mobs of angry parents. I wrote, uh, I read over the uh, vaccine and mass mandates, um, asserting their protests should be treated as domestic terrorism by extremist hate organizations. Oh, not my teacher. My teacher's fine. Really? Because mm. your teacher's union is not fine. No. Yeah. And, and we never hear an argument as to why these mask mandates do not apply to, let's say, Europe. Right, like, well, they're supposed to be so progressive and so science-based. They're not masking their kids in elementary school. Do you ever hear them push back with a reason as to why mm-hmm. it's anti-science to to not want to mask your kids here, but the entire continent of Europe isn't masking their kids? Are they against the science? Well, we pretend that Europe doesn't exist now. Yeah, yeah, we just pretend that they're not having the same problems that we are. Except we're much further away from the science than they are. But I just want to point out that they, this teachers union, if you're a teacher and you belong to these unions and you, your union is saying that these are angry, dangerous, terroristic mobs of parents, um, if you don't quit that union and say, I'm out, I'm out. Then you're you're part of it. 
If you are, if that union is representing you, and I know I won't be able to work there without the union, then don't work there. Then don't work there. Stop reinforcing these lies by standing quietly by its side. Well, I want to change it from the inside. Too late. It's too late. How are you going to change it from the from the inside? They have gone crazy to where they're calling parents terrorists. By the way, um, just so you know, I, I know these parents, they have no reason to be upset at all. And these school boards have been so open and honest with everyone that I can't imagine why people are angry. But here's here's Joe Manson, uh, uh, Manchin. Now, let me, he's on his houseboat. Yeah. And uh, there's a kayaker, a kayaker that is in the story. It seems like maybe there's one or two. No, there's a whole bunch yeah, of a people. Bunch of them. Yeah. very much appreciate that. Let me ask you all this question. I'm happy, you know, I appreciate and I respect, you know, but uh, some of the neighbors are complaining. That, that's all I'm saying is I, I could be out here all day with you guys. I'm making that part up. Don't harass the neighbors. And, uh, you, come, you come to my office and we'll talk about it. Gee, that seems reasonable, mm-hmm. but that's not what the kayakers did. Um, by the way, um, cinema was was followed into the bathroom. I want you to listen to this audio. We need a build back better plan. Right it's now. a guy going into the ladies' we bathroom. Need that door for we need along with a woman. The build back better plan. Me has the solutions that we need. We knocked on doors for you to get you elected, and just how we got you elected, we can get you out of office if you don't support what you promised us. We need seven million citizenship for seven million. We need the double back time right now. Psychopaths. They're in the bathroom. My name is Blanca. I was brought here to the United States when I was three years old. And in 2010, my grandparents both got deported because Thanks of the season 70. Sweetheart. We need to hold you accountable to what you told us, what you, you promised you us that you were going to pass when we knocked on doors for you. It's not right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now she, I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor of human she's trafficking. walking out, and it's because of the lack watching of her hands, that we don't have in the gig economy. not paying any I attention to her. To stand by workers, lots of people who are like me. Do these people, do these people have a, a right to do this? Yeah. Do they? I don't think they have a right to film you in the bathroom. No, they don't have a right to film you in the bathroom. They do have a right to to speak their mind. Mm-hmm. This is the problem when you have no morals, no ethics, when everything justifies the end. Mm. I mean, uh, I, I yeah, I'll do anything. I will. I will follow you in the bathroom. I'll harass you at your houseboat. I will. Come to your house at night. I'll harass your children because the end is so important. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know about you, Glenn, but if someone was doing that to you, I I would out of I mean, I, this is a weakness, a personal weakness. But out of spite, I would not support whatever bill they were arguing for. Well, I would think that these two better wake up because you keep giving in to these uh, bullies and it's only going to get worse because they don't care what you did yesterday. They don't want to have a reasonable conversation with you. Don't tell me that as a parent, I don't have a right to go down to the school board who's been screwing with uh, the parents, trying to cut them off, trying to make sure that they get their own way, having secret meetings, et cetera, et cetera. That's what's happened here. Don't tell me I don't have a right to go and say, what the hell you people think you're doing? You work for us. I have a right to do that. Not at the grocery store, not following them around, not going to their house, but going to an open meeting, and they're closing them. Don't tell us we're dangerous. You know who's dangerous? These people.
They may seem all fine in their kayak, but if you don't do what they say, believe me, what's the next step? What's the next step? Because they believe in these things, and if you don't do these things, then you're part of the problem. All right. People in Washington, you better wake up on who your friends are and who your enemies are. Because it's not the mobs of parents that are your enemies. Back in just a minute. This is the problem. This is why this is why nobody believes anything anymore. Georgia neighborhood terrorized, terrorized by a white male member of the Klan. Police now say the person that was making the racially motivated threats to burn down houses in the neighborhood and kill people was not a white male member of the Klan, it was a black woman. She's the one that made the handwritten notes, claimed to be six foot tall, white male with a long red beard who was a member of the Klan. I'm gonna burn your house down and I'll kill all of you. You don't belong in the neighborhood. The notes which used the N word and talked about hanging people were received by at least seven black residents in the suburbs 25 miles from Atlanta. How many times is this going to happen? How many times? Every time. Every time. Every time. Just at this point, assume any racist graffiti is a hoax, and you will be right almost all the time. Black high school student admits responsibility for graffiti. (laughs) Why do we have to keep telling you black lives matter? Uh, It's a student staged a walkout to stop these racist attacks. Uh, yeah, okay, well, I'm glad you did that walkout. Uh, I wonder what you're going to say now that, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that it wasn't, uh, it was, a uh, it was a black person doing it. How about this Georgia Democrat? State Rep. Donna McLeod, a Democrat. Speaking to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution in an article about Georgia Republicans pushing for a statue of Clarence Thomas, she she said, I'd rather them keep a Confederate monument than a statue of Clarence Thomas. Mm. It's revealing, isn't it? It really is. It really is. They always claim whatever is right in front of them is the worst thing ever. Now it's Clarence Thomas. He's the worst. Th- he's worse than slave owners and those who fought for slavery. Are you kidding me? How do these people have any credibility whatsoever? By the way, there was also in Union Square uh, in New York, the George Floyd Memorial statue was vandalized by a skateboarder who doused it in silver paint. Police obtained the video that shows the male vandal ducking behind a nearby statue of uh, John Lewis and fiddling with something in his backpack around 10 a.m. He's put paint all over it, and then, and then he he went out and he told them who he was. Uh, he painted Patriot Front, a uh, uh, white nationalist hate group. He painted it right there. He wanted everybody to know. Is it the Patriot Front, a group nobody's ever heard of, or is this yet another story of people stirring things up because the ends justify the means? There are a lot of things uh, going on today, or this week, uh, it is the opening of the Supreme Court. Tomorrow is the first uh, return to the Supreme Court, and this one's going to be a big one. It'll, you know, it's perfect. All of these decisions will come out next summer, uh, and spring and summer, and it'll be perfect just in time for uh, re-election. I want to be great. Mm. Yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, I don't see any possible issues. No, I don't either. I don't either. Impossible to foresee any negative consequences that come out of this. Amen, brother. Do you have, have you heard the theory that basically conservatives have benefited uh, 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 from the politics of abortion over the years? Have you uh, heard this? It was. It's a pretty interesting no. theory. I've heard it made by conservatives, mm-hmm. where basically the concept is, while obviously this isn't about politics for people who are pro-life, mm-hmm. the the politics of abortion have basically been, this is a settled law in the courts. It's never going to get overturned. So the left, while they still have their days of talking about, you know, they obviously talk about abortion quite a bit, it's really the passion is behind the people who want to stop it. They want to stop it from happening. Mm-hmm. And they never quite get over that mountain. And they're always trying, and they never quite get there, right? Where the left has had what they wanted, and they've become complacent, and this is their thing, and they'll always have it. So b- abortion motivates more votes from the right because people want to change the status quo. And it doesn't vote as, motivate as many votes from the left because they already have the status quo. Reverse of this happening potentially in the future with the Texas law and potential overturn of Roe versus Wade, where now the left will be infuriated that this has gone away and will become more motivated to vote over it. And there, the one piece of evidence, a little bit loose at this point, but you saw how the, the California election sort of changed tones after the Texas thing happened. It, all, it was a big thing they talked about. Uh, Gavin Newsom used it all the time to say, don't let California turn into that evil Texas. And a lot of those moderates who were thinking about voting for Larry Elder wound up settling with Newsom at the end. And there's a theory that potentially part of this was because the abortion thing has started to animate the left in the same way it animates the right. Well, the media war has already begun. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're already laying the groundwork. Um, ABC is doing an interview with the Roe baby, mm-hmm. the one that mom wanted to kill, she didn't get the opportunity. So now she's like in her 50s, and uh, mom's not around, and she's coming out with an ABC special. Yeah, Shelly Lynn Thornton is her name, which we did not know until, I think, now, Yeah, basically. The National Enquirer found her when she was 19 years old and tried to get her to come out. And so, but she didn't want to speak on record at that point. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think in 2021 this would even be an option, would it? I mean, no, I, they just they, would have out they of They just her. would have done it. But uh, they tried to, they did find her and they talked to her and tried to get her, you know, to do a story about her. And now she's coming out and telling her story on ABC tonight. No. <laughs> My, it's a very special program. We don't know. Is she pro choice or not? Now, let's just break this down. She's on ABC Disney. Mm -hmm. Uh, It is a controversial uh, topic for all Americans, but more controversial uh, for liberals if she comes out pro-life. She would then also really kind of hurt the other side uh, if she were pro-life. If she weren't pro-life, it would be quite a feather in the cap (laughs) of the uh, of the left. What do you think? (laughs) What do you think, ABC? Do you think they knew before they started? Do you think they know now? And it's not going to be a surprise when she says, oh, yeah, I say slaughter all the babies. It's interesting because they don't tell you in the previews it's going to air tonight she grew up though in texas and spent a lot of time in texas we have the texas law in front of everybody's face right now Mm, we have the supreme court potentially overturning Mm. roe versus wade in theory coming up with this mississippi case Mm -hmm. the timing of her even if it's just her choice of saying now is the time i want to speak out it just screams to me that she would be pro-choice though she does not say that and she definitely seems to not like her mom that's one thing i did (laughs) Yeah. The woman who was like, yeah. I'd rather throw myself down the <laughs> stairs than have this brat. <laughs> right. Yeah. For some reason, what they didn't surprise. get along. No, huh? Yeah, she never made up with her. Now, she's passed away since the uh, the mom has passed away. And she was, she she changed to pro-life 
but we're not really sure if that's what she really was. Yeah, there, so she famously was obviously in the in the case to to make abortion a constitutional right, and I know it existed in the Constitution the, the whole time, but the recognition of that right occurred with Roe versus Wade, and so she was very much a pro-choice activist. Eventually, changed to a pro-life activist, and was in front of you know conservative audiences for a long time. And then at the end of her life, someone went to her with with a documentary and got her on video basically saying the opposite again. Actually, I was uh, pro-choice, if I remember it right, but I, I needed the money and the, the, the pro-life groups were paying me a lot. And, you know, she got a bunch. Of, obviously, she got paid for speeches and things over the years, which would be normal for someone who's an activist on either side of the debate, you know, with, a, with essentially a celebrity status within the conversation. Uh, she was paid for speeches. Totally normal. But th- they painted that as this proves she actually was just getting paid for these views. And she seemed to indicate that, uh, you know, in a sort of deathbed confession type mode. That maybe she wasn't so pro-life after all. I mean, there's a lot of we've talked to. I think we talked to someone who knew her very well throughout this period and was fully convinced she was pro-life. I can't. It was a pastor, I believe. I, I, if you remember this interview, we did it a while ago. Um, but she, he came out and said, like, look, we worked with her throughout this period, and I mean, I don't know if she changed at the end, but during that period, she was definitely pro-life. I don't remember so, that interview. Mm. Was it good? Well, I did it. Of course it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was memorable, clearly. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, the the uh, court is going to be taking that on. We're going to find out tonight whether the baby that mom wanted to kill now thinks it's okay for other mothers to kill. Um, I think we know the answer to that. It's a little like Facebook last night. Did you see the whistleblower? Yeah, the whistleblower's on, out. The whistleblower on CBS, 60 Minutes. Uh, is it me or are we getting shorter term uh, windows for whistleblowers to be secret? Like, they seem to just yeah. release the information and two days later are on television now. I know, like, I know. What? That's not a whistleblower. That's just you telling us. <laughs> hey, like, a fine. whistleblower is somebody who's, like, blowing a whistle and doesn't want to be found. Right. Except by the authorities. <laughs> and then, like, 40 years later, you find out yeah, who it is. Right. Like, how long did it take us to find out who Deep Throat was? It was uh, decades. We, really, we don't really know for sure, do we? I think we do really know for sure now. Um, I don't know. I can't. Quote you the name off the top oh, of my head. Oh, I think that's right. He died. Yeah. When he died, they said, Yeah. Once he died, a, we yeah, were allowed yeah, yeah, to yeah. tell you. And yeah. so they told. That's right. But that's I right. mean, it took, he, the guy had to literally die before right. he found out. So uh, this whistleblower was on uh, uh, 60 Minutes, and she was going to deal the dirt on uh, 60 Minutes on about Facebook. Mm-hmm. Did you see it, Stu? I didn't see it. I saw I heard, oh, read some man. clips about it, though. Uh, yeah. I want to show. She really blew the whistle. Cut two, please. At headquarters, she was assigned to Civic Integrity, which worked on risks to elections, including misinformation. But after this past election, there was a turning point. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. They told us, we're dissolving Civic Integrity. Like, they basically said, oh, good, we, we made it through the election. There wasn't riots. We can get rid of Civic Integrity now. Fast forward a couple of months, we got the insurrection. And... When they got rid of civic integrity, yeah. it was so, a moment hang on where just I was like, so, so the whistleblower <laughs> is blowing the whistle saying, we need Facebook to do more suppression. Right, because they, they turned it off, and that's when the, when the insurrection, right. quote-unquote, occurred. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. So they need more uh, uh, hate algorithms, and they need to keep them on all the time. That's what the whistleblower. <laughs> so wow. when you look at the whistleblower tonight being the row baby, what do you think she's going to say? <laughs> I don't know. That's, yeah. a, that's fascinating. So because I heard her say something effective like if I if the result of this is everyone hates Facebook, I haven't done my job. I just want Facebook to improve itself. Uh-huh. And by improving itself, it means censoring more? Yes, it means oh. censoring more. <laughs> it means <laughs> watching I those I, evil right-wing people more. I shouldn't be surprised. I will say there's another big uh, whistleblower interview uh, today. Uh, Megan Kelly has on the Chris Cuomo Accuser Ooh. Uh, today on her program. Which would be immediately following this on XM on Sirius XM. Yep, or you could uh, catch her on her podcast as yeah. well. I'm interested in that one because she's a big-time 
news executive. This isn't just like, you know, the typical storyline here. You're like, oh, it's some random person. We don't know her motivations. She's just some, some, that woman, Miss so, Lewinsky. You know right. what I mean? Like you never yeah, yeah, had yeah. a real sense of, this is a, this is a well-known te- television executive accusing Chris Cuomo. And Chris didn't even bother to address it, did he? No. He didn't even bother to come out and say, hey, I'm sorry about the whole pat on the ass thing. He didn't even bother with that. That didn't even happen. He didn't even do the basic like CNN. dismissal. CNN. Yeah. CNN. CNN is the worst you you right know, Don Lemon is facing a scandal like this, too. Don is? Don is. You, you haven't even read it. I have not even heard it. Apparently, there was an issue with some guy. And he. Mm. Uh huh. And nobody said. I mean, CNN, really? Especially because they jump to acceptance on every Everybody one of else. these things with everyone else. Everyone else. They cover it as if it's fact from the, the second the accusation is made. And that they're horrible, horrible monsters. Now, I will say, I also have covered the Chris Cuomo accusation as fact, largely because he admitted it in the story. Um, he admitted that he did it, and the email where he said he did it and apologized to her for it. But other than but that, but other than that, I have no evidence, of course. So, so maybe I'm he being was a partisan. bad guy at the time. Can you really trust him? Yeah, <laughs> hey, maybe he was lying about admitting yes. that he did this. Like, he didn't do it; somebody else did it. But he was such a bad guy; he wanted credit for it. I'll be interested to hear because you know she says in her piece uh, that talked about the Chris Cuomo uh, groping. That she doesn't want him fired. She just wants to use this as a teachable moment and we should all learn from it and all that. Which, you know, again, I mean, Chris Cuomo should be fired for a hundred different reasons. Number one uh, is that his show sucks, right? Like, uh, that's the number one reason Chris Cuomo should be fired. But who are you going to put on? I mean, who really? Who are you going to put on that could. I mean, at this point, you could put like one of the winos that is up on 57th Street. This is like. And- I, I can do a better job than he can. But he, that and wino he could. That wino that could. Wino do a could. Better, just the bottle of wine sitting there empty by yeah, itself could, could do, do better. a better job than Chris right. Cuomo. But so, I mean, who are you going to get? You know, who who else? Who else do they have? I don't know, but someone else. I mean, he's Chris Cuomo has proven he's not good at his job. He's a constant psychopathic liar. I mean, to the level, like, I don't know anyone like Chris Cuomo. I mean, seriously, in my entire life, I don't know someone who lies as frequently as Chris Cuomo. I mean, he's constantly doing it all the time. Now, maybe you know someone in your life that does lie like that. They're, they no, they obviously don't. exist, but I can't think of anyone. I mean, think of all the things this guy has done, you know, from advising his brother after after years of of cl- taking every Me Too accusation at, on its face and saying it's all true when it's against other people, he then av- advises his brother to stay in there and basically accuse these women of lying uh, because there'd be no reason to keep his employment and his governorship if unless they were lying. So he advises him to do that. He writes speeches for him basically while he's on the air. He covers... Uh, his brother when things are going well. He stops covering them when they're not going well. He uh, has apparently groped news executives. He, and that, this is just about outside of his normal He was outraged lying. by Donald Trump and every woman that ever even he even looked at. Of course. At. He accused outraged. Donald Trump of being against the science a thousand times while he was taking herbs and spices to treat coronavirus. I am not kidding. But it was I not am the, not lying about that. It was not the seven or twelve herbs and spices. It was not KFC. It was not KFC, was not KFC was, related. That would have been delicious if that if I could have taken a bath in those herbs and spices, I might have eaten myself. He was getting tests from his brother's administration and he and his family receiving COVID tests when regular New Yorkers could not get right. them. All of these things and he still holds, holds a job. That's CNN for you. The most trusted name in news. All right. You know about hardware. How about software?